Yeah, so the, we've got what we want. So at this point, we're following, following the person around. They can go and hide, go wherever. Hey there, so today we're going to talk about um, field of vision. So um, our character can walk around our world as we've been working on um, go to different places. He can go behind things, but he can get lost, so we can hide him. Uh, and so one of the things that may not be really something we want to happen. Um, so we're, what we're going to work on is more like a field of vision. So if he goes behind things, it creates more of that transparency that you see in a lot of games. Uh, so you can still see where their character is. So we're going to create um, two sprites, just just so we can visually see them different. Um, one is field of vision. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. We want it bigger than the character. So for right now, we'll just to leave it like that. We'll pick a color. We're going to make it um, center it 16 and then put it down towards the bottom of his feet. So we're going around the character. So then we're going to make another one larger than that. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate this one. Um, So this is we're going to call this one out because we're going out of the field of vision. And we're going to transform it, make it a little larger. So f for fun, we'll do that forty-eight and doesn't need to be that large, but. So we increase this by six, what, 16, so I'll add 8, so 24 and 36. And on our character, <coughs> actually we're going to create two objects. Object field of vision, and this is going to be his field of vision. And then we're going to create, this one's going to be, uh, we're going to use the, f the out so we can visually see it. But we're going to add a gl global um, a parent object that we're going to use for any object that we want to be able to create that transparency for. So we're going to uh, call this one an environment. And that's all we really need to know is because we need to know this environment exists. And then we're going to go back to our tree, because the tree we want to be able to walk in front of or behind. We're going to say this is an environment object. So every tree that we create, um, it'll automatically know that it's an environment. So we can also imply, add, create large rocks or boulders or something, and then add this environment object, and it'll, it'll treat it the same way where you can walk behind. So what we're going to do is go back to our field of vision out. So this is the larger the, the squares. So this will be the last thing. Um, so I'll, I'll show you how this works. So the first one we'll add is if there's a collision between this and an environment object, we are going to 
um, change the transparency. And we're going to change the transparency of the other object to, like, let's say, quarter. And you can adjust that depending on how much of a transparency you want. The other things we want to do is if we're behind it versus in front of it. So if the other uh, depth is less than this depth, which is going to be where the character is, um, we're going to perform this activity. And every step, because this is similar to our character, we're going to have to create a step that that changes. We're going to run that script before that we created. Uh, drag it in there and run the set the depth. And we're going to add this object to the character. So when the character is created, we're going to add a field division. And we're assigning it to an object, to a variable in there so we can use it and reference it in other... When the boy exists, we can use it and then uh, reference it. So we're going to create it where the character is, our field division. And every time we move, we also want to go down here and move our field division. So let's run that and see how that works. So the field division is going to be where we are. And then if we're in front of an object, so make it invisible so you can see that. Uh, it's still rendering there, did I not? Wrong one. So we're in front of a tree it's not it's not going away but if we get behind a tree it'll so you can walk behind the trees and it'll it'll disappear for you but our pro as you can see our problem is when you walk too far away all those things become stay so that's where our field division out comes in play so similar to the other one we're just going to add a step event. We'll copy that over. S and then on the collision of an object, uh, the environment, we're going to change, copy the, the event back over here, we're going to change this back to 1. And we're going to get rid of the, keep the transparency invisible. And when we create our character, we're going to change the field of vision out. Let's create, there we go. So actually we're just going to make these both visible for this run.
So you can see that the out is larger. That way when we get behind something, or we're going to have to fix that. So currently it's not working exactly the way we want it to. We'll go back and look at this again. So when we walk around behind, it's not uh, fading out and fading in the objects that we want. So one of the things we can do here is is the order um, that we're, we're working on. Um, the fade out is actually we want it to set everything it collides to one as a one first and then go back and set the field of vision to transparency. So we're going to switch order within your objects to execute the code differently. I, I do. So we'll try that. Yeah, so that's going to change the way everything is rendered um, and how things behave. Just even the order within the objects is going to change how things look. So let's go ahead and get rid of the uh, visibility on those. So now when we walk behind something, he can go behind an object and not have it have it disappear, and then when he leaves the area, it goes back to normal. Now this is, you know, just provides a little bit better uh, flexibility as far as the, the environment that we can generate. Um, now there's another way to do that if you don't want to do the two different objects, uh, fade in and fade out. I did that just for the order and collisions. That way you're only doing it. Two objects are only testing for what they're colliding with. The other the other option you could use is uh, in your object environment, you could create a, a step to always create the, the alpha to begin with, always one. Let's actually, let's make sure that's what's happening correctly. So yeah, so this is, we'll get make sure you can see that that doesn't actually, that's available to do it that way. Um, but it's actually the order that's making this correct thing. So that in the object environment, you can either create a step event that creates everything alpha one, um, but we don't need to do that. Every, set every object every time we we run through it. We don't want to don't want to have to do that to improve uh, performance. So let's go ahead and remove that step, that extra step in the uh, environment objects. This way, we're only dealing with uh, two objects and their collisions to other objects. So run it one more time. Get the person to to look around. Yeah, so the, we've got what we want. So at this point, we're following following the person around. They can go and hide, go wherever, move around freely in the, the environment. So uh, thanks for watching. Until uh, next time, good luck coding. So it's actually a nice little shadow that we're that we have.